Welcome back guys. Uh, what we're going to do in this tutorial, we're going to talk about how we can write and read from 9.5. Basically, we're going to use some processors. We're going to go through some basic processor that will allow us to write to our local system. In this case, uh, for, for this uh, tutorial, we're just going to write to our local system and then read from our local system. And we're going to go through the processor that processors that allow, allows us to do that. So before we start, um, make sure you have your NIFI installed. If you haven't done so and you don't know how to, follow up my tutorial that I put in the description uh, on how you can set up locally on Docker or using an EC2 instance um, on Amazon Cloud. Cool. So let's jump right into it. Before we jump into it, uh, let's first open our terminal and we're going to go to our OPT folder. So if you see guys, I'm already here and I have all my installs here. I'm going to create a new folder. Uh, this is going to hold our data. So basically, I'm going to call it, um, uh, come on, uh, data demos. Cool. I cannot do that because I need to sudo in it. In my case, I need to sudo in it. In your case, probably will be different. Okay, so now that we've done so, uh, here let's create another. Let's create another folder. As a matter of fact, if I would have been smart, uh, <laughs> I could have, I could have done this. Let's say um, chapter. Let's call it chapter nine in this case, because I believe we're at chapter nine, and use the flag minus p, and that should do it for us. And let's get the fat. Okay, cool. So now we have our working area where we can write data and read data from. Now let's go back to NiFi. Um, and here, let's drag on the canvas our first, and uh, I'll say my personal test and most used uh, <laughs> processor, which is generate flow file. Generate flow file. I always use this one for whatever reason, if I want to trigger something or if I want to, I don't know, test my cup. So this processor, you click right on it and you go to this configure button or you can double click into it and it will take you straight into the properties. Here pretty much I'm going to go over the I'm going to go over the properties and what they stand for. So uh, this processor creates flow files with random data or custom contact based on your needs or requirement. In this case, what we're going to do, we're just going to create a batch size of one, which is how many flow files he will create at each run. The data format is going to be a text or binary. In this case, we're going to keep it as text. Unique flow files, uh, we're going to leave this as false. And the custom text that we're going to put, uh, let's say uh, our initial data feed, let's say. Cool. And now the character says we're going to leave it as, as it is. And the MIME type, the MIME type we're going to leave it as it is uh, and I'll show you guys why. Basically, if you don't know what MIME type stands for, it's used to identify what type of data it's sent over the internet or over the network. And then the handlers of the data will understand what software they should use in order to open that content. But we're not going to use it but, uh, for now. Uh, for, the scheduling, for the scheduling, I'm going to put this to 300. But not that it would matter because we're going to run this as a single time, a single time. The setting, we're going to leave it as it is. Uh, relationship, we're not going to touch it. Um, and comments, we don't know, we're not going to add any comments. Cool. Now, this will generate us a flow file. If I'll just run it using, uh, where is my command? Uh, actually, I need to link it before um, I run the next command. So next, what I'm going to do... I'm going to add an update attribute command. The reason I'll do that, you guys will see. Um, so the update attribute processor will update incoming attributes or create new attributes with new values. In this case, if you see now, now the menu changed. Now we have, once we create the success, the success connection, because if you look at this one, let's delete this connection and we say, oh, there's nothing. I can only disable it or uh, configure or do some other options, but since it's, it since requires a downstream uh, 
a successful relationship, then after this, we will get the start run. So what we're gonna do now, we're just gonna say run once. If I were to choose start, uh, pretty much this is gonna run at the frequency which we set here. So we're gonna get one flow every 300 seconds. So for now, I'll just say run once. And if you see here, uh, this flow generated uh, was generated. And let's let's list the the content of it. And let's jump into it. The way you do it, you go to this question mark, or you can download it, look at it. For now, let's look at it through this perspective because I want to check the attributes. So here we get a unique ID, the file name. So this is where we want to change that. We want to use that update attribute because I don't want this ugly name. I want something that I can look at it and make sense of it. The size, the file size, um, how long it took to be uh, executed, if it's penalized or not, the container, uh, the section identifier offset. We talked about this when we talked about the life, the life cycle of a flow file. If you haven't seen that video, it's one of the, 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 the first ones. Uh, I guess it's important if you really go really deep into 9.5, but if, if you're not, uh, then you can just consider this. And now the attributes, basically the attributes of values. So we have the path UID. Cool. Now, and if you want to see the content, just, just go over the view item. And we can see this is what we sent. Cool. So now let's take that file name attribute and update it, basically. So we're going to go here and you're going to go to properties. And here you're going to click on the plus button. So what we're going to say, we're going to say uh, uh, file name, file name, sorry, center, and let's give it a new file name. So I'll say uh, data.txt. Apply, and now we see it's in uh, invalid position. Now what we're gonna do next, we're gonna write it to that area. If you guys remember, we're gonna write it here. So to do that, we're gonna use a processor called put file. Pretty straightforward, right? It kind of makes sense what he's going to do. So let's link it here. So basically, um, we use the update attribute uh, let's say start it and we can look in the queue and actually inspect those attributes and right now our file name is it has this value so it's data.txt the content didn't change so we're all good to go um, now we want to store that file so the put file attribute has a couple of um, uh, parameters so let's go over them they're not very complicated and um, uh, I think there it's important you now. The directory basically where you're gonna put the file. So in our case, if we're gonna go to this path and let's paste it in. So that's gonna be the directory. The conflict resolution, what this that, what does this mean? If the file exists there, it will fail. If the uh if the fail, let's say if the option is to fail, if the file is gonna be overwritten, it will fail. Um Replace will override the file without failing. Ignore will basically do nothing, like your file with uh, not um, <coughs> will not be written or fail. Or we can have a reference parameter, which we're not going to have in this case. So in my case, what I'll do, I'll go for replace option. Another thing is create missing directories. If I were to say chapter nine and add another one, let's say directory one, then this one directory will be created there as long as my nifi uh, uh, let's say process user has the privilege to create uh, folders in that directory which is in this case he has now let's move to the next property maximum file count so this maximum file count stands for when you want to let's say you have a folder in uh, you want to put a maximum of 100 files in it and that's it after that just move forward, create a new folder. So that, that's what it stands for. It's pretty much specifies the maximum number of files that can exist in the output directory. If you have 99 folders there and you put it, he will, uh, he will not add it. He will fail. Uh, and then if you should route that fail, um, you, should, you should route that fail um, uh, uh, flow out of this to another connection that will pretty much create a new file, new folder in... Uh, create its uh, 
run successfully. Last modify timestamp. If you don't change this one, will automatically go to your. <coughs> Sorry about it. If you don't change this one, it will automatically go to its uh, current timestamp. So you can either set it manually in this particular format that you see there. So it's like year, month. Uh, it's pretty much a timestamp uh, format. Permission. What permission do you want the file to have? So basically you should use the Linux permission system. In this case, if you want to give, uh, I don't know, be available to read only by the owner, you give it a value of uh, 400. Uh, if you want to be executed by everybody, make it 700. So this is a case when you want to store a file that will be, let's say, then executed, or you want to store a file that can be only written by a particular read and uh, written and read by a particular user. And then the use, if you leave it by default, by default it will go to 644, which is uh, read and write by the owner, read by the owner's group, and read by the others. And then the owner in the group, if you don't change it, then uh, NIFI will take ownership or the user that runs the NIFI processor. Now, we don't see the file name here. Well, basically because the file name is inherited from the update um, processor which you remember it's an attribute so now now let's go ahead and and also this one gives us a, an, an output of a relationship so what we're going to do here let's go and append it to our next processor so basically we're going to write and then automatically we will go and read so to read we have a couple of um, we have a couple of processors one it's fetch file and one it's get file or we can also have a tail file tail log or tail file processor so for now what we're going to do we're just going to use get file in this in this uh instance so let's link this success success relationship to this oh sorry we won't be able to do that with get file sorry the get file doesn't have an incoming relationship this is this is a a standalone um, uh, processor. So what I'll do for now, I will do uh, a fetch file processor. And this one has an incoming relationship requirement. Right. So on relationship success, I want you to get that file. And what we're going to do here, uh, as a matter of fact, let me go and add a log attribute here. So this log attribute, whatever message comes uh, this way, uh, it will be logged into our NIFI log. And for now, I'll just disable it because I want to see if my put file uh, processor fails or succeed. I mean, if it fails, we'll see it here and no success will happen. But let's go ahead and run it. So we got a success. And if we're going to go to our folder and we're going to do an ls minus l we can see that the data is here was written with a 644 which is read write read read and if we're going to do a cat on this and we're going to see this is the data that we have our initial data cool so happy days so far we saw how we can generate some data update the file name that we're going to write it to and then um, write it to our local host now this fetch file, let's go to the fetch file uh, processor. This fetch file processor receives two parameters here, absolute path and file name. If you look at this one, this one's the, the actual put file will have them in their uh, uh, output attributes. So if you go here, we got the file name. And if you go to the, we have the path. So this should, um, actually, we do not have the path basically. Um, we only have the file name. So for this case, what we need to do here, if you're going to go to absolute path, we have to replace this absolute path attributes with a string, which is our uh, actual path. Or we could have pretty much uh, set it as a variable. But for this example, we're just going to do this. Basically. So he's going to, he's going to increment with file name. Uh, and then the completion strategy, what completion strategy means. So in case of a success action, what this process is going to do? Nothing, which is the default. Move the file to another location. This is a good strategy when you're, let's say, 
you have incoming data that was processed successfully and you want to mark it into a successful or unsuccessful folder or delete the file so for now we're just going to say you know i don't want you to do nothing and this is the option is when you're going to move the file when you choose move file you have to populate this value with uh, an input where you want it to move uh come move conf conflict strategy again if the file exists in the destination directory what is going to do same principles as the previous rename replace keep existing fail uh log level when file not found fine and log level when permission denied basically how critical should this be you know how, in terms of verbosity we're going to leave it as error we're going to apply and now so just to recap we put some, we wrote some data we fetched the file and now let's uh with this particular fetch let's forward it to another to another processor so actually let me put this on this actually let me delete this one and what we're going to do i want to count the number of words that we have in that file that's all i want to do so for this one pretty much just think about nifi in the processor in the filters like what do i want to do i would say i want to count oh there you go i can either use a counter or count text <coughs> So before we go over the, the options of the context uh, processor, let's complete this one, uh, the action. So we're going to say on success, you do this. In case of a failure, route it to the same log. In case of not found or permission denied, you go to the same relationship. Oh, sorry. Failure, not down, relationship denied, present. And now let's run. Cool. So no failure, no issues. If found the file, and if you go to the queue, basically uh, he fetched it and this is the data. And if we're going to look at the data, we have one, two, three, four uh, words there. Cool. Now, let's go to our final processor because we are already 17 minutes into this uh, tutorial. And let's see what it does. So context, basically... Um, this is think about it as a, as a as a function that you run something you have an input and he will give an output the output of this one will be the right values out of this uh, let's say properties he will count the lines count non-empty lines count words count characters split words on symbols uh, character encoding and call immediate adjustments so what we're going to what we're going to do here right now we're going to want to count the lines so this is true or false we're going to say yes count the the non-empty lines okay so there's a there's a distinction here so you might have files that have a hundred total lines out of which one or two are empty so this is important sometimes when you're processing data because you're getting like oh i processed a hundred lines but then you look in your data store oh i only got 90 rows you might wonder why that happened uh some data producer might give you new lines out of the blue and you, you're going to get, I don't know, thrown away. Count the words. I want to say, I want to count the words as well. And I want to count the characters in the words. True as well. And the rest we're going to leave it as it is. Now, I want to forward the output to this uh, success to the same log and then failure to the same. So basically, let's run this one and let's list the queue let's see what he returns to us and how accurate it is so the address remain the same in the details in the flow details now we see where we got multiple other attributes so the file name we have a character count of 21 so if we say i don't know three uh five uh six eight ten plus four fourteen uh plus uh another four eighteen one two three empty spaces yep that's it we got 21 um 21 characters there now how many lines we have one how many non-empty lines one as well how many words we had there four so perfect it actually performed as expected cool so now as a final uh as a final uh um processor we're going to demonstrate again get file 
you remember we had that issue where get file does not receive any input basically because this get file um it only that he only requires the it has some it has a bunch of options as a matter of fact so he wants us to give him the input directory so let's go and copy this input directory and now um you can have file filters you can use uh, a regex here or you can specify the exact file uh, you can have a path filter for example how many files do you want him to fetch as a one time i'll just say i just go for one not that he's going to do more uh what we want to do here we want to keep the source files or no so in this case i'm going to say uh, i want you to keep the source file. so if you don't keep it he will pretty much do a sort of a, a, a read or a move operation uh recurse uh, uh subdirectories I would say true, but there's no subdirectories. The interval pooling uh, basically uh, indicates how long to wait before performing uh, directory listing. Again, uh, ignore hidden files. Uh, all the dot, um, all the dot um, uh, files, he will ignore them. The maximum file age, if it's zero, he's not going to consider this in, uh, this particular parameter. So. Uh, actually the minimum file age the minimum file age is like um a file must be in order to be pulled so if you say i want you to run this one and only pull files that were generated in my last 24 hours and if they are filed with a greater uh creation creation timestamp he will ignore them. Uh, maximum file size and max minimum file size basically if it's zero it's all but you can say i just want you to go and Fetch me file over one GB or whatever, you know? That's what it serves for. So let's go ahead and run this one. And what I'll do, I'll copy this um this processor here and I'll link it to the success. Cool. So now let's run this only once. So we can see that he runs successfully. He fetched our he got our files, pretty much the same, 21 uh um bytes. And if we look in our file system and we do an ls one is that the file still persists there because we didn't tell him to move it if i would say uh you know what don't keep the source file be greedy go and remove it i'll empty this queue uh and we run it again let's see what happens so we see that we have a success here now we no, <coughs> we no longer have the file there. So be mindful of when using the, the get file. Cool. So that is it for our introductory how to write and read files from our local system using NiFi processors. I hope you guys enjoy this content and um, drop me a comment. Give me some suggestion on what you want to explore using i5. Uh, if not, I'll keep going from uh, zero to hero with this i5 uh, uh, tutorials until we get to a point where we can say we're full-fledged data engineers uh, using i5. All right, I see you guys in the next tutorial.